Hello, welcome to another QA Automan tutorial. Uh, yesterday we talked uh, about having data providers added to our classes. Um, so we can have uh, one area we could put multiple data sets in and run a test multiple times with that data set. Um, so you can look at that video um, down below. Today we're going to talk about page object classes. Um, what are page object classes? Why are they good? Um, why should I do them? Um, so to give you like a, a overview, so with page object classes, that is where you are going to store and house all of your actions and all of your elements of a particular page. Um, so for example, you have Facebook. Um, so getting the, the email fields, getting the password fields, getting um, buttons, links, all of that stuff um, would be all housed in the page object. If it's the act of filling out the first, you know, the first name field, the last name field, clicking in a drop down, selecting a date, all of those all will be housed in one area. And this is really good for a couple of ways. One, if at any time anything changes in your pages, all you have to do is go to your object page object page class and change it there. You don't have to do it anywhere else because everything's called from the page object class. Uh, two, it's a good way to create um, easy to use methods. So if somebody who isn't as um, program savvy on your team, um, they can actually just write scripts um, in the tests. Um, so they don't actually have to learn all of the, the programming stuff. All they have to do is just write the tests. So it's really good for people that are novices. Um, and then that will be injected into your tests. Um, of course, data then it gets injected to your tests, and then all of your tests get housed into your test in GXMLs where they can run. So let's set up our first page object class. Um, I create a new folder, pages, um, you know, right under data. Uh, so class. So this one's going to be used uh, for our Facebook main page where you log in, sign up, because um, we're going to be taking these and using a page object class. So let's call it Facebook main page. I usually end things with page just so I have an idea of what, what it is. Um, <clears throat> so first things first, um, we need to get a list of all of our elements that we're going to be using. Um, I already have found these two. Um, you can use CSS selectors, you can use XPath, whatever you do to find elements. Um, so I have my email field and my password field. So string, e, let's see, it's a, uh, it's a field, uh, spelled field, field uh, email equals something, and string field password. So why am I saying field and then the name? Um, I usually put the type of element in the beginning um, and then the name. Uh, the reason for that is when I start writing out my code, I can say this dot type field, it, it will auto suggest um, everything that's field underscore. Um, that's only for IDE stuff. Um, it's just how I do things. Um, anyone, you know, to each its own. Uh, so let's get our, we have our elements, which is this, I'm just moving these over. Of course you would, you know, go find the selector that you're using, type it in here, all that. Um, string field, password, string field, uh, email. So we have our, uh, selectors. Um, so we can't actually start writing actions yet because we need a driver to find these elements and then interact with these elements. So to do that, we're actually going to create a constructor, um, which will be passing in a web driver driver. Not a when driver. <laughs> when is this complete driver? Uh, web driver. Um, so we also need our driver as well. So web driver driver. E so this dot driver will equal driver. So we have our driver now. 
So let's write our actions. Um, our actions that we're doing s thus far in, in this is uh, clicking, uh, or se excuse me, sending keys to a password field and email field. So let's write those out. Public void, um, set text, set text for the email field, e uh, email login. Let's say email login. Um, the reason I'm saying email login is, is there's also an email field down here. So <clears throat> we have to specify between the two. So that's actually a good th email. And we'll say login, password, login. Um, and then we want to pass in what text we're going to be using to set um, for the email field. So now we have our driver dot find element by and I'm using a CSS selector like I said feel free to use anything else um, XPath, sizzle whatever you use uh, and I pass in my variable um, and we want to store this in a web element so we can manipulate this element Alt enter, by the way, is what I'm doing to auto import um, for those who are using um, IntelliJ. So we have our element, which is our email field. Um, so we're going to say element dot uh, send keys, which will be our text. And we want to make sure the text is, in fact, there um, in case something happens. So that's where our assert is going to come in. And we're going to put our assert in here. Um, replace this with element, dot get value, and then our text is what we are asserting. Um, so yeah, we have our set text. I'm going to move this and create a password, um, our password version, password login text, um, and then use our password. So if you notice, I did a copy and paste, and it's really, these are the exact same. The only difference is is I am um, I'm creating a uh, I'm only sending in like th this string and I probably should just do a set text comma string I'll explain why I'm not doing that at the moment and um, this is also what goes back to if you have someone on your team that does does not program but you want them to start writing tests this is a good start for them and, and you'll see when I start writing the actual test itself so we have our set text and we have our set password login. Also with a page class, there's also um, where you want to house the URLs and the, um, the title, uh, which is very important as well. So let's put those in as, and we're going to actually make these public static um, final string uh, page title. Nope, I didn't copy it. Dang it. Let's copy that over. So copy this. <clears throat> the reason I'm making it static is there's times where you're going to be clicking from one page to another. And to verify you got to the other page, um, you can just pull the page title. Uh, you don't need to instantiate a whole class just to do that. Um, so that is the reason I actually make this static because you will use the page title um, for other pages often. Um, and also I will be pulling the URL, page URL. Oh, we should probably make that a string. It's important. Um, so we have our page title and our page URL. So this is kind of a a really simple page object class. So you have your page title, your page URL, elements in the page, um, the driver you need to um, that will be passing through the constructor, the actions, um, and that's pretty much the basic um, page that you'll probably be using. Um, so now let's inject this into our tests. So here we're going to put in the pages we're using. We're using the Facebook main page, so FB main page. Um, and this is our what we're going to be using to call everything. In our setup, 
this is where you are going to instantiate this page so new Facebook main page and then we need to pass in our driver now make sure that this driver does get um, created before you start passing this in so it has to go after your drivers created so now we have our Facebook main page so we can start replacing all of our um, text with variables main page dot um, page URL and then this would be the title so dot that's weird uh, not getting any page title I don't know why that's doing that. Interesting. Um, we now can remove all of this and create one single line, which is really, really good. Um, makes everything really compact. Uh, <clears throat> and same with this. One, two, three, four, five, six is our, it's really not that password, but. Um, so now look how much smaller and compact this is. Um, and the reason I also t was talking about um, when you are writing scripts, they can just put comma or period and they'll see what do I want to do? I want to set the text to password. That's the reason I do that. Um, it makes it so that they know if someone's just kind of scripting things out, they can just start using the actions. Um, so it makes it really, really simple to write stuff. Um, that's why I, it's kind of going against my methodology or, or my my rule of, you know, if it's the same, you know, you can make it even uh, simpler. So I just want to be clear about that. So let's run this. Let's run this guy. Um, let's use our XML. We don't. We want to run all groups. Um, so we're actually going to include P2 as well. Um, another way to run this, you can just delete your groups and run just the class. Um, but I like to keep groups so I can change the class when I need to, or change the groups. So let's run. <coughs> so it's running the .xml Facebook page. Oh, I... Did I... Did I... Oh my goodness. Um, so I, <laughs> I'm not using page title. That's important. Page title. Oh me. That's problem with copy paste. Here we go. So now we're running our login test XML. Loads up. Pass, pass, pass. Perfect. So there's your kind of um, intro to page objects. Um, later down the line, I'll start creating multiple page objects and we'll see how we can incorporate multiple page objects into one test. Um, until then, I will see you guys next time.